Hey, I'm Dr. Pillay. I want to talk to you about listening. That's right, listening. Uh, a lot of my clients really perceive that, that listening is a passive act. It's where I sit and as you talk to me, I just keep my mouth shut and I just listen. Yet I'm going to tell you that's not what listening is. Listening requires you to make an effort and that effort takes energy. So number one, listening is a learned skill. None of us are born natural listeners. We have to, every day, make a decision that I'm going to go out in this world and learn to collect information as people talk to me. Number two, you've got to be prepared to listen. You've got to practice when you listen. And more important, you've got to be patient. Patience is so required because being prepared means I've set a time aside and I've put myself in the right mental state to be the receiver of information. The idea that while I'm doing this, I can always get better and better at it, and that's the idea of practice. You have to practice listening. And I'm, I'm dead serious. I tell my guys in my different men's groups, I want you to go home tonight, and I want you to practice listening. And they look at me like I'm nuts, because they think that listening is where I just sit still, and I, with this expressionless face, uh, allow a person to ventilate. Hopefully, after you listen to this brief seminar, you'll understand that's not what it is. But you must be prepared, you must practice, and, and more importantly, it takes patience. The patience I'm talking to is because as someone is speaking to you, you're the one that's got to allow it to unfold. You can't get your mind caught up in things to do or places that have got to be. You've got to allow it to, unflow, to, un, to flow at, at a pace that is, that is comfortable to them which may not be comfortable to you. So you've got to learn to develop this idea that I can be patient and I can listen. Third thing I want you to understand about listening, it requires concentration. Because when a person is talking to me, I must follow the process, the pattern, the, the logic train of those disclosures. And as they do this, um, I'm trying to put in my mind's eye a picture or some understanding of what's being said to me so that it makes sense. Now I'm going to come back to that in a little bit because I want you to work more in that area also. But number four, I want you to know that listening requires unconditional acceptance. I don't sit down with the idea of listening to someone with some predetermined notions of what I will listen to or what I won't listen to and I will tune them out when I hear something I don't want to hear. No. The unconditional acceptance is whatever is said, I'm going to be there to, to receive, to witness, to validate those, those things that are being expressed to me and they've got to be unconditional. And then finally, the last thing I want to remind you, number five, is that when we listen, understanding is mandatory, agreeing is optional. The idea that I'm listening proactively to, to understand what's being said. But during this process of understanding, I'm also not tying into any notions of, oh, I don't agree with that, or my God, that's awful. Agreeing is not something that we have to worry about. When we're actively listening to someone, we're, we're taking the time to listen to what they have to say and understand it. But let's don't worry about whether we agree or not, okay? Um, as I move us towards what I want you to realize in, in this idea of listening, let me tell you what I find because I work with men. I do nothing but men's groups. And I find that men often confuse this idea when they listen with facts and feelings. And that is, they tend to listen to collect facts to prove their partner wrong. Well, that ain't listening, is it? Because if I just said to you that it's about understanding is mandatory and agreeing is optional, but we're listening to facts to decide if in fact you know, you're right or I'm wrong. Well, that's not listening. That's more putting yourself into this position of being a judge and a jury. The other thing that my men tend to do is they tend to confuse that if they are right, that this relationship should be okay. Think about it. You know, you can win every argument and still find yourself in divorce court. And we see it all the time where the guys walk in the door, and, or women too, and they want to convince me of the facts of the relationship and why they're right and why he or she's wrong. And then in the same breath say, but I miss her so bad, I want her back. And, and it doesn't work that way. Because if a person falls out of love with you, it's because they don't get the emotional validation. They don't feel connected to you. They don't feel like they understand you. So another thing, again, second bullet, what my men tend to do, they tend to confuse being right right with relational happiness. Next thing my men tend to do, when they listen, they tend to be 
problem focused, not solutions focused. You know, listening, as I said before, it, it's a learned skill. So we've got to collect. We've got to learn to collect. But the idea in a relationship is that we're moving along to get the information about feelings and my understanding of your feelings and my validation of your feelings that we can start working towards solving some of these issues and problems in our relationship. So the, ocean, the notion of active listening is that let's, let's focus on how do we collect information to understand each other better so that ultimately we can be solutions focused not problem focused. Understand, problem focused means we, we worry about who did this and why it's not my fault. And that never does help anybody. And then finally, the, the last thing that I find when I work with my men is they have this notion that feelings and validating feelings is a sign of weakness and that men don't do that. Well, we're going to go back to where I was before, which is love relationships are 90% feelings and 10% facts. And work relationships are 90% facts and 10% feelings. The very foundation of a love relationship means that I have to be validated and validate my partner in a loving, emotional way, or it's a business. And unfortunately, today in today's world, with the divorce rate the way it is, it's because men have not transitioned. They have not figured out, I can't listen to collect information to prove you're wrong, and expect my partner to maintain in love with me, okay? Um, as I work through some of these ideas, let me, let me ask you to, to validate a few things about listening. Number one, that listening is, it requires me to connect with the emotions. And so emotions are relationships. Relationships have to do with in feelings and, and that idea of bonding, okay? So when I ask my guys to put themselves in that position of listening to collect information to understand their partner's emotional stand, then they start to shift and, and start to see that, wait a second, it's not about what's happening. It's about how my partner feels about what happens. See, and that's where a lot of folks really screw this up, especially my guys. They listen to what their partner's saying, but then because they're collecting information to prove their partner wrong, really don't understand how she's feeling. And because they don't, she, he doesn't understand how she's feeling, well, I become emotionally bankrupt. And what is that? Divorce. You know, I, I, I've said this many times in different lectures, and I can see my guys getting, they, they think about this, and here we go. It's something like this. Long before the legal divorce occurred, the emotional divorce happened. Think about that. Long before my partner left me, she decided to leave me. Well, what we're referring to is the idea that my partner emotionally disconnected. And when my partner emotionally disconnected, then they said, oh, wow, I got to get out of here. But maybe it wasn't the right time. Maybe the job or the rent or the money set aside or even a safety plan wasn't in place. So even though emotionally they were bankrupt, remember long before I left you, I decided to leave you, they needed a time for them to get themselves together. Now. Let me talk to you a little bit about reflective listening because that's where we want to be today. Reflective listening is this idea that I'm going to mirror back to you uh, in your own words something that you said. And, and by striving to, to, by mirroring back in your words something you said, that hopefully promotes you to elaborate, to talk a little bit more. Because now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to strive to verify the message that you're trying to give me and promote you to expand on that. Um, in doing this, we are encouraging your partner to elaborate, to tell me more. Elaborate, E, energy, emotions, labor. To emotionally labor, to expand, to tell me more about what's going on. Fourth thing that's about reflective listening that I want you to, to keep in mind is you're attempting to improve the accuracy of the emotional message. The accuracy. Because most of my guys in relationships really don't understand their partner's burned out, their partner feels like they're unsafe, they're not validated, they're not understood. No, no, no. Now is the time for you to get that out, to get to promote your partner, to talk to you and say to you accurately how they feel and what the expressions are. And then finally, the fifth most important thing about reflective listening is it helps your partner to diffuse their anger 
and their frustration to get it out, let it out. That's why in, in the one of the first bullets I gave you before was about acceptance. Whatever your whatever your partner's saying, you got to listen. You can't make any condemnations about right and wrong. And that's where we are right here. The idea that as my partner's talking, let that anger get out. Let it come out. Let that energy come out in such a way that you know it's there and understand it. Because if you don't know it's there, you can't solve any problems. You can't work on bringing this relationship back together. Now, when people People tend to reflectively listen. Okay, so I'm talking about myself. I'm going to work to get someone to speak, and I'm using those five bullets I just mentioned. There's two primary ways that I've seen that people tend to do this. Some men or women tend to be more detective listening. That is, they they are going to elaborate by giving mirroring back and striving to verify and encouraging elaboration. But they're they're working to detective to collect facts to promote understanding of the circumstances and the situations. And I'm not saying that's all bad or good. I'm just saying that a lot of people find it very comfortable to say, well, now when that happened, what day was that, and was who else was there, and uh, were the kids present, and that's detective questioning. But the other main one that I see done is what we call compassion or empathetic listening. And, and that's a little bit more difficult because now we're saying, or we're asking the person to to reflect back to me, well, how did that make you feel? That idea of mirror, well, the person would say, I had a really bad day, I felt awful. And you might say, as a mirror back, well, tell me about that feeling awful. What was it? What can you tell me to help me understand what that feeling was? See, and so whereas one is about facts, what day, what time, who is present, the other compassion or empathetic listening is about the feeling you were sad, you had a headache, your stomach was upset. That's that direction. Now, a lot of people find it easier to do the detective questioning as a part of reflective listening. It doesn't matter to me. They both work. Because what I want you to understand is that when we, when we communicate, when we communicate, anytime I communicate to you, there's two components that you need to understand. There's facts and there's feelings. And if you want to look at it from a psychological or a clinical aspect, there's context, which is the emotions, and there's content, which is the facts. So what I like to point out is anytime I'm talking to someone, I've got this balance. I've got context, emotions, content, facts. You know, a simple metaphor, if you will, a birthday cake. Imagine a birthday cake that's got candles burning and the children's going to blow out the, the candles. Well, the context would be the beautiful cake that's colored, the emotions that are connected to this thing we're doing, my birthday, the idea that I'm going to you know, as a metaphor, blow out the candles, which is to, to bring closure to this is the event, this is my birthday, make your wish, your wish could become true. See, well, the idea of the wish and the celebration, that's the context. That's the context. The content is the people that came, the cakes on the table, do we have enough to go around, are the candles, are they lit? But as you discuss marriage and uh, birthdays and anniversaries, you know, the fact that we celebrate the anniversary, the day, the time, the place, that's the context. The meaning we put into it is the context. Context, Content, the date, the place, the fact that we do celebrate, context, the, the, what, what we put into it, the expressions of joy, the feelings I get when I'm enjoying that, that encounter, the ceremony, if you will. So understand that as we learn to communicate and learn to listen, we have to balance content and context. And in hurt relationships, we got to get that context out. What is the feelings that came about because I didn't show up? And we have to put with it the content, well, I didn't show up, but how late was I? Or, you know, to that person that's totally mindless of times and didn't have their watch on, I didn't know how many minutes or hours I was late. Could you tell me more what that's like? But understand, the the idea that that you... In order to understand your partner's feelings, you got to do five things. Number one, you got to put yourself in their shoes, see it from their reality. Number two, you got to encourage them to talk to you with feeling words, and then you've got to, you know, validate those ex feelings. Number three, while they're talking, try to reflect back the facts and the feeling, give it some balance, but also to promote understanding is mandatory, agreeing is optional. Remember that? We talked about that up front. Number, number, and that, that's number four, focus on understanding. And finally, number five, 
find the middle ground that allows you to communicate about this issue and to understand. The middle ground is about facts and feelings. It's about putting yourself in a collaborative way. I co-labor with you to understand this. Um, hey, look, I hope you understand. I uh, hope you enjoyed this brief seminar on listening. Uh, we've got some listening exercises we're going to do here at the, at the, here at the clinic. Uh, thank you very much. Again, I'm Dr. Pillay.